So this question I've put here is for us to discuss um, a classic kind of thing that they like to do in exam questions is to say, determine whether it will move. Will the particle move, right? Now, I didn't do A and B, you did A and B yourself, but the only thing that we had to look out for in this question is that they tell you that the weight is 10 newtons rather than 10 kilograms, hence it just being 10 and not 10 G. And later on in the question, they tell you that the normal reaction is 18. So I don't put R, I just put 18. And instead of putting mu R, I put 18 mu instead. It said it was on the point of slipping up the plane, which is why I put friction going down the plane. We wanted to find out what P and what mu were, so I just did resolving in perpendicular to the plane to come up with P is 18.7, and then I did resolving parallel to the plane to find out that mu, by solving that equation, came out at 0.62 or 0.621, depending if you did two significant or three significant figures. Okay, it then says that the horizontal force is removed. And we want to determine whether or not the parcel moves. Now, this is a five mark question. When you look at um, five marks, you should probably think, OK, there's got to be some thinking that needs to be done here. Probably in the new spec, this would be three marks, because they've just reduced the number of marks for everything to make life harder for you. Um, so just have a little think. We've got to, we're going to be removing this horizontal P force here. If we remove that force, what things will be changing? Yeah, Ekrem? Friction will be acting so the friction is going to change direction because if there's no horizontal force, it's now going to want to try and move down the slope, which means the friction is going to move upwards. What else is going to change? Reaction force. Yes, the reaction force is going to change. Look, if I remove this P-force here, I'm going to remove this P-force and I'm going to remove this P-force as well, which clearly shows me that it can no longer be 18 as the normal reaction. The normal reaction is going to have to change because we've removed this p-force. If the normal reaction changes, what else changes? The friction changes. So there's two things. The friction has changed its maximum value, and the friction's direction has changed as well, what Ekram said, OK? So we're going to draw a second diagram for this to find out what it now looks like. So it's going to look like that one up there. Apart from instead of it saying 18 upwards, it's going to be the normal reaction. There's not going to be um, mu r going to the left, because it's going to try and slip down now. So we think it's now going to be trying to move to the right. We're still going to have the 10 sine 30 over here. And we're going to have the 10 cos 30 that we have. So it's a lot more simple as a diagram that we have here. Now, actually, I don't know that this force here is going to be mu r. OK, I don't know if it is going to be mu r. In what conditions would it be mu r? If it was limiting equilibrium or if it was if it was moving or if it was accelerating. OK, but it might not be. So I'm not going to call it mu r. I'm actually just going to say it's the frictional force. OK, it's the frictional force that we have there. We need to find out whether it is going to move down the slope. If it's moving anywhere, the only way it's going to move is down the slope because we've removed that p-force that was there. So to find out if it moves, I need to compare 10 sine 30 with friction max. I need to compare those two things. Friction max is the, mass, the, the biggest thing that friction can be. If 10 sine 30 is bigger, than the maximum value that the friction can take, what's going to happen? Yeah. It's going to start moving down, because it, the friction can't get any bigger than that. And if 10 sine 30 is less than the maximum thing the friction can take, it won't be moving. What can you tell me about the size of the friction if 10 sine 30 is less than the maximum value of the friction? It's going to be 10 sine 30. It's going to be equal to it. Because remember, we said that friction will match the opposing forces that we've got there. So first of all, I'm going to compare. And the force that's trying to make it move down is 10 sine 30, which is 5 newtons. And I need to find out what friction max is equal to. So friction max is equal to mu r. Now, mu, we worked out earlier in the question, which is 0.62. The temptation that people do, and they do this wrong, is they would say, oh, well, earlier on, R was 18. So I'm just going to do 0 0.62 times 18. But we've already established R is different because P is gone. What is R in this case? 
10 cos 30. So the maximum value that the friction can take is 0 0.62 times 10 cos 30, which is 5.37 newtons. Ronak, I think this is, I think you didn't change the value of R, did you? You fixed it now, yeah? I just suddenly have realized I looked at those numbers and thought they seemed a bit strange. So is it moving? No. No. Okay, so because 5 is less than 5.37, it is not moving, or it will not move is maybe what I should say, because it says determine whether or not the parcel moves. It, I'm just going to say it will not move. So this little bit here is, will it move? You have to compare the forces that are trying to make it move with the possible forces that could oppose it, the frictional force. If the weight was increased, it's probably going to mean it's going to start wanting to, to move because they're pretty close, aren't they? Five newtons is trying to move it down. It can resist all the way up to 5.37. What is the value of the friction? What is the value of this friction here? Pardon? Uh, not 5.37, no. It's 5. It's just 5. Because remember, it's not moving. The friction is never going to be bigger than this one. It's going to match it so that it doesn't move. OK? That is how we answer questions if it will move with this little inequality and a little sentence that goes with it. Right. 